Right on, right on, right on. Elruteri raises insulin. All the links will be in the description. 49% higher insulin, l ruteri improves insulin secretion. l ruteri increases insulin secretion. And l ruteri improves gut microbiota, causing an increase in insulin production. Now, <laughs> I'm certain that somewhere in this world, that is a good thing for someone. But, as I understand our current situation, a majority of the world population is not in need of improving their insulin secretion. In fact, our insulin is too high for good health. Why is that we're seeing this epidemic? Did we see this about 100 years ago? No. 100 years ago, there was really very rare to see a really overweight person. It was rare to have chronic medical conditions like heart attack. It was rare to have patients with autoimmune conditions. And back then, the reason for people to die were infections, tuberculosis, pneumonias, a poor hygiene that has been gladly being overcome by adequate sanitation. But we have replaced that with this very poor management of chronic medical conditions. And what is the common denominator in all these chronic medical conditions? The common denominator is something that is called insulin resistance syndrome. You can call it metabolic syndrome, you can call it cardiometabolic syndrome, whatever the name, Rebens uh, syndrome, so many different names, but they all share the same common denominator, insulin resistance. So what is this insulin resistance syndrome, and why is it so prevalent, so common in our society? There's some estimates that about 65% of the population over 45 years of age has already insulin resistance. Insulin is a critical hormone. We need it to stay alive. A type 1 diabetics that don't produce insulin really absolutely require it. Otherwise, otherwise they die very soon. Uh, but insulin has many good points and many bad points. The good point is it is absolutely necessary in the low doses necessary to metabolize sugars, carbohydrates. But when we are chronically overeating, carbohydrates, mostly the, not, the, the very common refined carbohydrates that are new to our eating habits in the last 50 years, we stimulate the production of insulin in ways that were not deemed to be appropriate in our genetics. We produce more and more levels of insulin to metabolize the growing amount of carbohydrates we are eating. And eventually, it's like asking the pancreas, that is the organ that produces the insulin, it's like asking the pancreas to do heavy push-ups continuously, trying to counteract the effects of the high carbohydrate diet that we're eating, and at the same time, requiring more and more and more levels of insulin. At one time, when we have these very high levels, our bodies, in general, every cell in our body starts to become resistant to the effects of insulin, and our pancreas has to work even harder. That is what is insulin resistance syndrome. Sixty-five percent of people over 45 are insulin resistant. Bottom line, insulin resistance is caused by too much insulin. One word, it would be, in my opinion, it would be overload. And when we overload the body with carbohydrate, with things that stimulate insulin, now we get a increased, we get a high insulin level. And that's not so bad if it happens once or twice, but if this becomes chronic, if we do this every day or several times a day, like we're told to do, told to eat high carbohydrate meals, 
many times a day with frequent snacks. Now, this leads to insulin resistance. So the ketogenic diet is all about blood sugar, and it's about stabilizing blood sugar. But people react differently, and there's a few variables that we want to look at and understand. So if someone has taught their body to depend on carbohydrates, and all of a sudden you withdraw that carbohydrate, your body has basically lost its primary source of fuel. And in some people, they just feel a little bad, they get the keto flu, they, they feel a little irritable for a few days, and then it kicks right back in. But some people, their machinery is, has crashed a little bit more, and they don't have that backup system kick in, and they end up with hypoglycemia. So when most people with hypoglycemia, the problem originates because they were on a high-carb diet, and through years of eating high-carb and processed foods, their blood sugar get into a roller coaster pattern, and this pattern is very, very stressful for the body. You start stressing and depleting various different organs. And every time it's high, now you have to release a lot of insulin to lower the blood sugar fast. And then when it drops fast, uh, in the beginning, the body can, can compensate and slow down the, the curve at the right point, and you don't get hypoglycemia. But if you really get your your whole mechanism out of whack, and that that dampening mechanism doesn't work, now your blood sugar can come crashing, and you get hypoglycemia. Now, in this state, your body doesn't have enough blood sugar. It doesn't, it's too low to function, and it hasn't learned to develop ketones, so it doesn't have a backup fuel. Are you coming off a standard high-carbohydrate American diet? Okay. And you're insulin resistant, which means that your pancreas is basically doing insulin production push-ups because your cells, the way they protect themselves from a flood of sugar because you're putting it in your face all the time, is to down-regulate receptors and down-regulate their response to the hormone called insulin that secondarily drives sugar into the cells. Because that sugar is toxic inside of cells. So now cells block the ability for sugar to enter the cells and the pancreas then produces more amounts of insulin to get the sugar into the cells, and you keep blocking that. So your insulin levels are very, very high. And in order to keep that going, now you have to eat more and more carbohydrates, which most people don't have a problem with because they're addicted to that. Okay? So this is where the wheels are spinning, and they're spinning, and they're spinning out of control. So now you stop eating carbohydrates. But you're still profoundly insulin resistant. And carbohydrate withdrawal while psychologic has a profound physiologic response. People call it the keto flu. That, that is a profound sugar withdrawal response. Because your body is still producing a certain amount of sugar, but it relies on your face on a regular basis to put sugar into your face. And your insulin is very high. Well, that insulin doesn't just come down. So now you're not eating carbohydrates. You're going on some, uh, I love Jason Trump, but some intermittent fasting because you live fasting is so good for you and you don't eat for 36 hours, well, your insulin levels are high and the insulin is still slowly removing that sugar from the bloodstream. And now your blood sugar goes down to low because you've eaten a meal but it didn't contain carbohydrates. And because that insulin is still pretty profoundly high, and especially as you slowly getting a little bit more insulin sensitive, that high level of insulin crashes your blood sugar, and it crashes it below a certain boundary where production is not happening. Gluconeogenesis cannot keep that blood sugar level up. And we call it often postprandial hypoglycemia. So you've eaten a meal typically devoid of carbohydrates, and an hour or two later, your blood sugar is in the toilet. And now you eat the magic yogurt that stimulates more insulin. In the do's and don'ts on Dr. Davis's website, he reports that the magic yogurt contains 200 billion plus L-ruteri per half cup. 
My question is, does anyone need 200 billion daily? <laughs> hey, thanks for watching.